Good morning, my humble, humble subscribers. It's a lovely day. It's currently 10.36 and I'm in the parking lot. I think from the last clip. I'm going to my last clip today. It's the day after carnival. I have absolutely no good things to say about Gen X or Carnival Sunday. I had a very terrible time. It was my worst carnival experience to date. I would have been leaving to make a 10 o'clock party on a boat, a cruise to Maiden Key. This is my first time going to Maiden Key and I was excited because I've never been there before. I arrive, the place is very scanty which is kind of surprising but not really surprising because I expected it to be late, right? I really never had any faith in Gen X after everything that I've been through for this entire season. Why I buck up a group of party goers as well as allegedly the captain of the ship who showed us a message. He doesn't have it as 10 a.m. He has it as 1 p.m. That's three hours of time difference. Oh God, I'm starting to feel hungry now. Cause guess what? I didn't eat breakfast because I didn't even fucking want to come to this fucking party. I just got up and get ready because I spent money on it. And I was like, let me not waste the money because they're also supposed to have refreshments. Gen X has sent out an email at 10.20 to say that the loading of the boat is starting at 11 to leave at 11.30. Whether or not it will start at 11.30, I will let you guys know, but I don't really fucking care anymore. I was contemplating if I should really do this video. I need to let people know that Gen X did not go well this year, especially after the glowing reviews I gave last year. I was so confident in them and they let me down in every fucking way that they could. I want people to know that there is some level of risk. I just couldn't understand what went wrong because last year was so right. <sighs> I don't think I can express how fucking good this fucking season was fucking to be like, guys. Carnival season 2023, Zoka season 2023, this has been the best carnival of my life. I looked good, guys, I still even kind of look good, like, big up glam by Reed because this shit, this shit still looks good. Guys, Gen X really did well. They had a lot of things that were really nice, so the bathroom and stuff were that. They had AC bathroom, it was clean. They had KFC on the road, which I obviously appreciated. It was just amazing, the trucks were good. It was a really good day, guys. Uh, the band did well, I had a spectacular day. This was my best carnival season ever. I don't, really, I don't have any complaints, actually. I, don't, I wasn't even harassed today. So, like, it's just a big win for me. I have heard that the band doubled in size but that would also mean you've doubled in money and someone also said that Gen X had the most expensive costumes because even the t-shirt costume was the most expensive t-shirt option across the other bands so you are not getting small change we are paying up to like 1000 plus US dollars some of us on average probably like 800 US dollars to fucking experience Road March and the other parties as well because I haven't even included the fucking other party costs and you guys cannot guarantee us decent service since I have time I'm just gonna get into it I need you guys to understand that it's so much adversary that we had to face I really was trying to be hopeful and I really was telling people the road is not going to be bad even though the parties and the costume distribution was bad I was I still believed in them I was just like there's no way they're gonna fumble the road and guess what it is they were less like, watch this style, Zoe. We're gonna fuck up your shit, bro. The costume distribution took three hours. Last year, it took half an hour and I was in AC. This year, I had to stand up and then come inside and sit down and wait for three hours. It was hot. There was no AC. There was like a little food, refreshments and some coffee. I got my stuff. I noticed she didn't bring out the wings. So I was like, yeah, my wings. And she was just like, oh, 
oh shit you have wings the costume itself i needed to alter and the alteration was fairly easy so it wasn't that bad mostly for my costume at the time i was pleased if you look on my neck you will see that i have hickeys from the neck piece hickey looking bruises from the neck piece but i still have the marks from where my costume bled into my skin it was irritating me so i took those off took off my thigh pieces but thigh pieces always give problems although it did look good it didn't last the whole day i also decided to go to their juve party because their juve party last year looked very lit and i had a negative experience at ambush so i wanted to experience a party that was good i will say that i did have fun at the juve because the paint the powder and the they had like a um, called like water sud thing that sud thing i don't know what to call it but they had that and that was kind of fun <laughs> They sent out an email saying that we're not going to start at 2 a.m. We're going to start at 3 a.m. And then on top of that, we didn't start at 3 a.m. I went at 3.15 only to find out they're not opening until 4 a.m. I had one cup of Johnny Walker at the venue. So when the trucks were stationary, the way how the trucks were moving so quickly on the road, I did not see it in my best interest to try to keep up. They were also very short staffed because it was like one bartender to like six or seven individual people. That was a mess. Alcohol was just, it just never makes sense. So if you needed alcohol to party, you never did alcohol get it. You have to work on your own vibes within you, which I can do. I don't know, I'm, I'm proud of myself for not drinking alcohol guys because I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep that up. The only reason why I really, really, really had fun at the Juve was because my crew big them up because we were determined to have a good time. We danced till we couldn't have fit no more and we did toasty guys so the juve was very unorganized but we still made the most of it it was really fun but we had to build the fucking vibe that was before road march guys i was still telling people road march is not going to be like this last year the trucks were moving at a good pace everybody was able to get alcohol in a timely manner like i was selling road march like i am a part of the band some people this was their first fucking experience and i was hyping it up to make it seem like it was a good experience and it was just mediocre there were some things that i just feel were unforgivable i'm not a project manager guys but i just don't understand some of the choices that they made some of it just don't make sense like why were they so short staff why all right guys let's let's get into road march First of all, the lack of communication is annoying. They didn't send out any instructions about how to tie the carnival costumes and I saw several people complaining about it. I didn't appreciate their flyer which broke down the locations because it just said we're starting at 8.30 which was, which was fuckery because most people would anticipate us starting at 10 o'clock because that's the usual start time. My photo shoot was 9 to 9.45 to finish at 10, to go on the road at 10 and guess who just got fucked? Tell us in advance so we can work with it. Because of that mishap, when I finished at 10 o'clock, I didn't know where the fuck they were. And they didn't have the item as time where their locations were. So how would you know where they were? You wouldn't be able to find them because there's no time on the, the, the location schedule on top of that. So when I finally reached, because I thought I caught them at Devon House, but it was not Devon House. It was Exodus. And I had to walk from Devon House to Belmont Avenue where I then proceeded to find out that we are stuck at Belmont Avenue. We are stationary at Belmont Avenue for an hour because they were late. So our breakfast was apparently late. Because of that, the other two bands had to cross in front of us and that took an entire hour. we did the stage the stage was nice i like that they're trying to um bring some elements from trinidad carnival to jamaica and they organized the stage this year so that you would walk up with your bands so last year's lunch was incredible like the way the place was set up was nice i just i was early i'm always usually early so i've never really had to join a line for lunch ever i think i was still early but i think i still ended up having to join a line and that was because they had restrictions and you had to scan every single time when you had to go through an area and that caused bottlenecks 
So it wasn't a smooth process for lunch. We ended up having to wait like half an hour probably to get the food in a long line. I actually thought that the food might have finished on us, but luckily it didn't. Or unluckily because the, the food was nasty. I, I, I kind of like the fish, but it was nasty. And it was like a bag of rice, three like a fish and two half dead vegetables like. I don't really have that much complaint about the food because I know that the food is just like just to get me sustenance so personally I don't usually cuss about the food but people were cussing about the food and some people never get food another thing about the lunch station is that the location that they chose I don't think was a good location it was very dusty and we're sitting on the ground and every time the dust fly it in my eye it a fly so that was not a good experience and just the setup was poor there was donuts I remember there was like a pastry section like last year just gave that they gave a fuck this year was just like we're just having this because we have to have it and I was like I was still trying to be like you know I was still trying to rally behind the band and be like okay I know that the morning was kind of fucked up and I know things happen and whatever so you know their supplier probably was late for the breakfast and that's why the delays and that's what happened with the mess with the road yeah it's unfortunate but I'm gonna try and recover the day after lunch they never gave me a chance guys they never gave me a chance to just even remotely be happy I probably need to wrap it up because allegedly the party is starting in six minutes after lunch now to explain for people who have not jumped before there are usually trucks on the road and we follow the trucks and then there's usually ropes on either side of the trucks and then we party inside the ropes because sometimes there are people who stand on the side and watch so you can have spectators and everything and then there's us that's inside it the vibing right the rope was just freaking ridiculous like the truck was right here and the ropes was like an inch away from the truck how could we fit inside that answer me that riddle me that gen x riddle me that also the security was they didn't know what they're doing. I saw one man kick out a guy and then he just gave up on kicking out the rest of the people. It's the fact that I hear the other bands talking about these stuff that I'm complaining about and they didn't fumble it. So it's like, what? What the fuck, bro? We want to ensure that the masqueraders get the premium service as well as space. But like a bag of people who weren't in the band were inside to the point where it was so crowded that I felt like I was suffocating. On top of the fact that the bar was running out of ice, water and alcohol with the new influx of people who are not in the band I couldn't get around, I couldn't dance, I couldn't have fun I also wasn't able to easily go to the bar and I saw people who weren't in the band getting fucking juice HOW THAT MAKES SENSE? WHAT AM I PAYING FOR? I could have literally just come on the road at the middle of the day and, and had the party experience for free So that was the situation with the rope the bathrooms downgraded as well. Last year they had AC in the bathroom. Real fucking rich. Real fucking rich. Okay, the bathroom has AC guys. AC. Big up the girl that told me about this because damn God. I didn't have to use the bathroom, thank God. Ashley went in the bathroom and she told me it was disgusting and it was nasty. Why promise us a premium service if you cannot maintain the premiumness of the service? I don't know how they managed to fumble everything. I don't know if it's on purpose. I don't know if they just don't care. I don't know if it's like suppliers and people just fail them. But every single party, you're gonna have the same issues. I'm always saying never talk to them again. That's clearly who are disrespecting me. You don't care about the and all you care about is the money. I pay a thousand dollars, a thousand whatever, and you, a regular person, didn't pay a cent. I got more fucking juice than me. And you got the party more than me. Like, I could have had a good time, and I still wouldn't recommend them because I've heard people's guys, I've heard people's complaints, and overall it was just a mess. So overall, I don't recommend them to anybody. I'm guessing that they can try to uh, fix this in the future, but they will not be saving. I want to sue them guys that's actually how strongly i feel about this because every single fucking event wasn't cheap and every single fucking event was organized well i'm not sure about how the actual music was yesterday i've heard people talking about it and i heard people said that it suck my friend said that they didn't even play search party once and i don't understand that's one of my favorite songs guys so i'm a little biased i want a fucking refund but yeah Guys. I have a 
had some time to calm down. I've edited two vlogs for my carnival season, which would have included the road as well as the party vlog. So you can check that out. But I have now edited this video where I was pretty fucking upset, I, you know, and I think it's justifiably so. I was upset. I feel like the service that Gen X promised, the experience that they promised, they didn't follow up on, you know, they didn't, they didn't give us that, right? And we did pay a lot of money for it, so it feels very yucky, very icky. And I would have heard the other bands had a good time and they highlighted that some of the things that people were asking for from Gen X were not unreasonable asks, but things that they could have followed through on. But I'm not as upset anymore and I know that things happen and I understand that this was just probably a terrible year for them and that they're gonna have to come back next year and they're gonna have to come back strong because like, you know, it was bad this year. So I wish them well next year and I do hope the best for them because I really enjoyed their service last year, 2023, and I, I think they have the potential to come back great. I will not be jumping with them though because I will give them a gap year to see if they recalibrate and come back strong, but I'm rooting for them. So, you know, we will see what happens next year, 2025. I don't think I'm gonna jump Jamaican Carnival in 2025. I'm not sure. I was so dead ass strong that I wasn't going to jump it because Exodus kinda just, I don't think I'll ever jump Exodus because they told the girl to build the costume from scraps and it's just beer mishaps every single year with them. And Yardmas, I really hope that Yardmas's costumes look better in 2025 than I may consider them, but I don't think I'm gonna do anything big for Jamaican Carnival if I do go because I am going to Trinidad Carnival so I think I want to go all out for the Trinidad Carnival because it will be my first time going to Trinidad so thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the laughs, the jokes it's not that serious in the grand scheme of things but it was a very disappointing and money wasting experience so you know there's a little bit of you know but I'm fine now and I'm not gonna sue Gen X or anything but like make sure you come back good next year Gen X Hero Master. Hero Master. So yeah. Thanks for watching the video guys. And I hope you enjoyed it. Because I had a lot of fun editing it.